is Emery, and with Billings Farm, I would like to welcome you to the first of our Time Travel Tuesday recipe video series. We're calling it Time Travel Tuesday because we're cooking with historic recipes from the 1896 version of the Fanny Farmer cookbook. Fanny Farmer was revolutionary in standardizing recipes, which means measuring out all of the ingredients and keeping the recipe the exact same all the way through. This helps because too much or too little of one ingredient could drastically change your end product and maybe not taste as nice or be too wet or be too dry. So Fanny Farmer was really amazing in getting all the recipes straight and so you can have a delicious product whether you make it in January or later in the middle of summer. So today we're making berry muffins out of her recipe and I have all of my ingredients measured out here. You can find the recipe um, on our website but I measure it out my flour, baking powder, and salt, my granulated sugar, my one cup of milk, one beaten egg, frozen blueberries, normally you would have used fresh, but I'm using frozen, and then um, some softened butter. So I took my butter out of the refrigerator overnight, let it thaw to room temperature, and now it's nice and soft. So the first step in the recipe is to cream the butter. So basically you're just gonna beat the butter around it becomes nice, light, and fluffy using a bowl and a wooden spoon. So I finished creaming my butter. Basically the mixture became nice and smooth and the butter got a little bit lighter in color. It took about a minute of beating it around in the bowl with a wooden spoon. And then I went ahead and I added my cup of granulated sugar and my beaten egg. Basically you want to beat the egg before you add it into everything, um, just like you would when you're making scrambled eggs, that way it has a nice smooth mixture. So this is what everything looks like. Um, this is the butter, the beaten egg, and the granulated sugar all in a bowl. And now I'm ready to add the dry and wet ingredients. Basically you wanna add them alternating, so which means taking a little bit of your dry ingredient mixture and then a little bit of your milk and adding um, it in parts. Uh, that way you don't over mix your muffin batter because overall you're looking for your muffin batter to be a little lumpy and that won't make your muffin tough at the end of um, mixing it all together. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the dry. Not quite half and then mix that in with the butter. You don't have to get it all the way incorporated, just mixed enough around. And then you can start to add a little bit of your milk. And then very gently start mixing that around. And then finish again with um, dries and then a little bit more milk. And then if you have any flour left in the bowl after you're done, um, finish with the flour and then finish with the milk and you'll have a nice um, sort of lumpy muffin batter. So I just finished mixing in the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients to our muffin batter. Basically this is the end result. It might be a little bit of a stiffer batter than what you're used to working with, but don't worry, you didn't measure incorrectly and you don't need to add any more milk. So the last step in our process is to add the berries to the muffin batter, but before we do that, I took out a quarter cup of AP flour and we're just gonna toss the berries in the AP flour before we add them to the batter. Basically, as the muffin's baking, that'll help the berries stay in the muffin and not all sink to the bottom during the baking process. So. Just mix the berries in with the flour, sort of toss them around in the bowl, and then add your berries to the recipe. And there might be a little bit of extra flour on the bottom of the container, but just try to get the berries and not the extra flour. That way it doesn't make your muffin a little bit, a little bit drier. And then very gently, you're gonna fold the berries into the muffin batter. And then once fully incorporated, the muffin batter will be ready for putting in the tins. So once your berries are all incorporated into your muffin batter, you're gonna use two metal spoons, take a little bit of your muffin batter, and then scoop it into a pre-buttered muffin tin, only about three quarters of the way from the top. 
Now I am going to bake the muffins in my oven at 375 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. But if you look at Fanny Farmer's recipe, she doesn't have a baking time or temperature included in her recipe. And that's because all the stoves and ovens at that time were wood fired. So basically um, no stove was the same and it would depend on the type of wood you were burning and how hot your fire was and the baking time and temperature for every home cook would be a little bit different based upon how hot or cold their oven was that day. So that's why she couldn't standardize baking time or temperature for all of her recipes. So the muffins just came out of the oven and I turned them out from the pan and left them on a cooling rack. Uh, the recipe made about uh, a dozen exactly. Um, I baked mine for closer to 25 minutes and I checked the center um, with a toothpick for doneness. If your toothpick doesn't come out clean, uh, throw the muffins back in the oven for about two to three minute increments until they're finished. Now I get to enjoy a fresh, lovely, warm muffin with a little bit of butter. Um, butter is also better if you make it yourself, so look for that video on the Billings Farms website. And we will welcome you back next week for another recipe for Time Travel Tuesday. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Have fun baking!